Hey all, happy Tuesday. Today's STEM project is painting the trees through the seasons. This project was inspired by the book, The Reasons for the Seasons by Gail Gibbons. This is the read along to that book. If you are doing the project, you will need your four pieces of blue paper. You'll need to get out into the great outdoors and collect four sticks. You will also need glue and then anything you have at home to create with, whether it's paint, crayons, markers, colored pencils, my niece went out into nature while she was collecting her sticks and grabbed leaves and grass and flowers to glue on. So it is all open to interpretation and however you see nature. I hope you have fun with the project. And if you are doing it, please be sure to share them with us on Instagram and on Facebook. And now without further ado, The Reasons for the Seasons by Gail Gibbons. The Reasons for the Seasons by Gail Gibbons. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. These are the four seasons of the year. The sun warms the surface of Earth, the planet we live on. The tilt of Earth in relation to the sun changes throughout the year. This is what makes the seasons. Each season lasts about three months. Four seasons make a year. That's how long it takes for Earth to revolve or make one trip around the sun. As Earth circles the Sun, different parts of Earth are closer to the Sun than others. This affects the amount of light and heat they receive. Earth is slightly tipped as it turns on its axis. It makes one full rotation on its axis every 24 hours as it moves along its path around the Sun. When the North Pole is tipped toward the Sun and the South Pole is tipped away, it is summer in the northern hemisphere and winter in the southern hemisphere. Six months later, when Earth has traveled to the other side of the sun, the North Pole is tipped away. It is winter in the northern hemisphere and summer in the southern hemisphere. The seasons of the hemisphere are always opposite of those in the other hemisphere. In the Northern Hemisphere, spring begins about March 21st. It's the season when more sunshine causes cooler air to be replaced by warmer air. In the Southern Hemisphere, autumn is beginning. The first day of spring is called the Spring Equinox. When spring begins in the Northern Hemisphere, Earth has moved along its path so that the sun is directly opposite the equator. On this day, daylight and darkness are the same length of time over the entire Earth. In ancient times, some people celebrated this day because it was the beginning of the growing season. Spring is the season when some birds that have been away for winter return again. This is called migration. Some whales migrate too. Some animals that slept all winter wake up and look for food. Spring winds are good for kite flying. It is the season when everything seems to come alive again. Trees grow new leaves and flowers bloom. Some crops are planted. Slowly, the days in the northern hemisphere become longer because that part of Earth is tilted more towards the sun. We see the sun higher in the sky. More direct sunlight reaches the ground for longer periods of time. Summer begins in the Northern Hemisphere about June 21st. The Northern Hemisphere is tilted more towards the sun than at any other time of the year. It is the warmest season in the Southern Hemisphere. Winter is beginning. The first day of summer is called the summer solstice. It is the longest day of the year. On this day, we see the midday sun at its highest point in the sky. The hottest days of the summer take place after the summer solstice because Earth keeps absorbing more heat. Flowers and plants grow under the warm sun. Many animals are busy raising new families. In the summertime, people have fun outdoors. They can go out to a beach, swim in a lake, or read under the shade of a big tree full of large green leaves. During the summer, daylight is long. We see the sun high in the sky. It might still be daylight at bedtime. The nights are shorter. 
Autumn season begins about September 21st in the Northern Hemisphere. It's the season when the air starts getting cooler. The leaves of some trees turn beautiful colors and fall to the ground, which is why some people call the season fall. In the Southern Hemisphere, spring is beginning. The first day of autumn is called the autumnal equinox. When autumn begins in the Northern Hemisphere, Earth has moved along its path so that the sun is directly opposite the equator again. On this day, daylight and darkness are about the same length of time over the entire Earth. Since ancient days, some people have celebrated this time of year because of the autumn harvest. Some birds migrate to warmer climates. Animals prepare themselves for the long, cold season to come. Children go back to school in many places. It is harvest season. Farmers gather their crops. There are country fairs too. The air becomes cooler because the northern hemisphere is tilted further away from the sun. The days grow shorter and the nights become longer. We see the sun lower in the autumn sky. In the northern hemisphere, winter begins about December 21st. This is the time of year the northern hemisphere is tilted furthest from the sun. It is the coldest season of the year. In the southern hemisphere, summer is beginning. The first day of winter is the shortest day of the year. This is called the winter solstice. On this day, we see the midday sun at its lowest point in the sky. In early times, the first day of winter was celebrated as a festival to honor light, to keep away darkness, and to hope for the sun's return. The coldest days of winter come after the winter solstice because Earth keeps losing the heat it gained in the summer. Leaves are gone from most trees, there aren't as many birds, some animals sleep all winter. This is called hibernation. Often it is very cold. It may be time for ice skating, skiing, and making snowmen. Some people wear winter coats, jackets, mittens, and hats. Sometimes it's nice to stay indoors. During winter, daylight is short and the nights are long. We see the sun low in the sky. Sometimes it is dark even before dinner. Areas near the equator have little temperature change during the year. These places are hardly, hardly affected by the tilt of Earth. Instead, the seasons are marked by alternating rainy and dry periods, two rainy and two dry seasons for each year. Each day at the equator, daylight and darkness are almost always equal. At the North Pole and South Pole, it is always cold. When a pole is tilted far away from the sun, it is winter. During parts of the winter, the sun never appears over the horizon. It is always dark. When a pole is tilted closer to the sun, it is summer. At times, it is always light. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. Year after year, the seasons repeat themselves. I hope you enjoyed The Reason for the Seasons by Gail Gibbons. Have a great day.